Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a menu for your game in Blender. This is using the mouse cursor. I'm also going to be going over how to add some sort of menu effects, such as whenever you mouse over an option, you get this little clicking sound, uh, and the option text also grows a little bit whenever you mouse over it. So before we get started, I want to show you what we're going to have when you're finished. So we have the Uber game title, and whenever we play the game, uh, we see we have the menu options off to the right. Whenever we mouse over them, we get this nice click, and you'll notice the text also grows a little bit bigger. If we click on story, we go to the scene story, which is just simply uh, the text story. If we go to options, we go to options, and whenever we mouse over exit and click, we exit the game. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how this is done. Okay, so here we are in our brand new Blender file. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do for our menu is name the scene something appropriate. So rename the scene to Menu. Switch from Blender Render to Blender Game. Uh, switch the 3D View Rendering Mode to Textured. And I'm going to switch to GLSL shading mode. You can leave it in multi-texture if you want. Some of the material settings might be just a little different uh, if you do use multi-texture. I'm going to stretch up the bottom window there. Uh, switch the bottom window to a logic editor. We're then going to delete the default cube. Hit Shift A. Add text. And right now we're going to add the different menu options. So you can hit 7 on the number pad to switch to the top of view mode. And we're just going to type in uh, whatever we want our different menu selections to be. So I'm going to do Story, then hit Shift-D to duplicate. And I'm just going to drag it straight down. And the second one, maybe um, Options, Duplicate again. And uh, to keep it simple, I'm just going to do 3. So I'm going to just have story, options, and exit. And of course, this is subject to your own stylings. You don't have to use this font. Uh, you don't have to have them arranged like this either. Uh, so it's all personal preference. So I'm going to delete the lamp and select the camera. I'm going to hit Control-Alt-Zero. Uh, so that sets the camera to look where I am looking in the viewport. And then I'm just going to use G to grab the camera and the mouse to move the camera around to position it uh, where I want. I'm then going to select my first text item and hit Shift S, cursor to selected. Shift A, add mesh plane. Um, I'm then going to go to the object type here and under maximum draw type here, I'm going to switch that to wire. So the plane renders as just a wireframe right now. I'm going to move him to line up with the story text. Uh, this is basically going to be the boundary box for our story text. This is where with the mouse over, we will be able to click on this particular piece of text. In the physics options, I'm going to check mark invisible and actor. I'm then going to select the story text. I'm going to hit Alt C, convert to mesh from curve slash meta slash serve slash text. And you'll notice that the physics type switches to static, so I'm going to have to set that back to no collision. I'm then going to do this with the options and the exit text. Same thing, just select the text, Alt C, uh, convert to mesh, and then set the physics type to no collision. Selecting the plane that is around story now, we're going to add a mouse sensor. This is going to be left button, tap. Another mouse sensor. This is going to be mouse over. We're going to add a AND controller and wire both of those sensors in. We're then going to add an actuator, and in this particular case, it will be a scene actuator, and we're going to do set scene. Uh, now we don't have a scene to set to yet, so let's go ahead and add that. So add a new scene, and let's name this new scene story. And I'm just going to put something uh, in here so that we know that this is the story. So I'm just going to add some text that says story, add a camera, 
Hit Alt R to clear rotation and drag it up a bit. Check to see that it works. Okay. So I'm then going to switch back to our menu scene. And now on our set scene actuator for the story selection, I'm going to select story. Okay, so this will work now, but you'll notice if we play the game, we can't see the mouse, so we don't really know when we're over the story selection. So if we go to the render tab, I believe that is, and scroll down to display, we can see mouse cursor here. And that will let us see the mouse cursor. So if we mouse over story and click, we go to the story scene. So I'm going to add a new material to the story text just to make it a little more easily visible. And I'm going to check mark shadeless, play the game, and yes, that's much more visible. So I'm just going to apply that same material to the other text options. Uh, so now we're going to do another bit of a personal preference bit. Uh, I'm going to add a sound for whenever you mouse over the story options so that you know you have the mouse over it. So we see we have our mouse over sensor here. So we're just going to add an AND controller, wire it straight across. And we're going to add a sound actuator. Now I already have a sound made up. If you don't have a sound made up, you'll need to uh, make one or download one. This one will be available in the link in the description. And I'm going to choose play end. So now if we play the game, you hear we have a sort of clicking sound. So the clicking sound is good, but I also kind of want the story mode itself uh, to expand just a little bit, like a mouse over effect. So I'm going to select the story text, shift select the plane, hit control P, set parent to object. With the plane selected, I'm going to hit I, scaling. I'm then going to switch to keyframe number two, I'm going to scale the plane up a little bit and then hit I, scaling again. If we switch between the two frames, that looks pretty good. So then on the same place where we're playing the sound actuator, we're going to add a action actuator. Wire that into the same controller as the sound actuator. We're going to play the action plane action. And this is going to have a start frame of 1 and an end frame of 2. We're then going to add a NAND controller. Wire that into the mouse over sensor, and we are going to add another action actuator. So we're going to wire that into the NAND controller. We're going to play plain action, but this time we're going to start with the frame of 2 and with the frame 1. So now if we play the game, mouse over story, grows just a little bit, and it plays the clicking sound. Okay, so now we're going to duplicate the plane, so Shift-D, drag it down around Options, enter Edit Mode by pressing Tab, and scale the plane to match up around the outside of options. Duplicate the plane again, move it down around to exit, enter edit mode, scale it to, so it fits around to exit. So then we're going to select options, shift select the plane that's behind it, hit control P, set parent to object, select exit, select the plane, shift select the plane that's behind it, control P, set parent to object. So now we play the game, we mouse over the different options, and they click and play a little animation. So then if we want to change what these buttons do, we just change what the scene actuator is here. So you see that I have the options plane selected, and I have the set scene actuator expanded. And you'll notice right now it's setting the scene to story, but we don't want that. So let's add another new scene. Shift A, add text. Options, Shift A, add camera, Alt R to clear rotation, drag it up, check to make sure that options is visible. Rename the scene to options, go back to the menu, change the set scene actuator to options. So we play the game, we click story, it goes to story, play the game, click options, it goes to options. So the exit one is going to not be a scene actuator, so we're going to expand the scene actuator and change it to a game actuator. Then we're going to select quit game. So play the game, mouse over exit, click, and it exits the game. Okay, so that's how you can create a menu 
for your game using the mouse cursor. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. I'd be more than willing to try and help you out. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, there is a link in the description down below. You can also download the finish.blend file in the description. But uh, other than that, that's going to be it for this tutorial. So I thank you guys very much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.